most opportune time here for Paulding if they want to try to get the upset here tonight. Well, as we're going to hear from Coach Hagerty in just a minute, they're used to it. They've got a target on their back every single time they suit up. And this team hasn't seemed to be phased by it. They know when to be loose. They know when to crack a joke. They also know when to focus and when to put their nose to the grindstone. As a matter of fact, they've only been pushed once this season. It was a couple weeks ago at Archbold. They won a tough fought three sets to two match. Other than that, they really haven't been pushed much this season. A, a situation here, and I know you coach different sports, but same principle here. How do you keep a team locked in when they're just playing better than everybody else they face? Well, that's where you, when having a uh, veteran coach like Greta Haggerty really comes in handy because she's not going to let these kids stay locked in. You know, they really have their goals set up high. They've got that target in the back, as you mentioned, Brent. But they've got a goal here. It's not just to win the league. They want to go undefeated. Absolutely. And they know that Paulding is going to give them everything they've got. So, you know, you mentioned senior night, emotions play in, but I look for Tenor to really come out focused and locked in, try to reach that undefeated goal. They still have just a balding and a road trip at Edgerton staying in the way of that perfect undefeated regular season. Had a chance to stop out at Tenor's practice last night. We're going to hear from head coach Bretta Hagerty coming up in just a minute. Our player profile, again, one of seven seniors, Avery Morris, outside hitter. I don't want to call her an anonymous voice in the chorus, but when you've got such tremendous depth, Kenzie Noggle, Zoe Rosti, Tatum Kreps is only a junior, but a tremendous force in the middle. And then what coach calls her volleyball ninja, Alina Ankeny. They just have so much talent on this roster. I said, Coach, you pick the player because they're all deserving. She said, Avery Morris uh, has been very quiet. She didn't tell her until right after practice. So she walked up to me and immediately looked at me wide-eyed. And I said, don't worry, we're going to have fun with this. She's a very well-spoken young lady. We're going to hear from Coach Hagerty when we come back. The Esther Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues here on DCTV. Esther Chevrolet Cadillac on North Clinton Street in Defiance, earning your trust one satisfied customer at a time. Visit them online at drivebombestel.com. We'll Estel Chevrolet Cadillac is this area's new and used car headquarters. Earning your trust one satisfied customer at a time. Estel Chevrolet Cadillac, North Clinton Street in Defiance and online at drivebobestel.com. Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues. It is senior night at Tenora Volleyball, looking to stay undefeated. They have a special season going right now. Hard to believe that it started just a couple of months ago. Sometimes things disappear in the blink of an eye as they will welcome Paulding tonight. It's also senior night. Seven seniors who have represented this program and the school really with great distinction deservedly will be honored this evening. Coach yes, Hagerty going to sure. join us right now. We're going to talk about a lot of different things, okay. but let's start with a recap, if you're okay with that, before yes. we preview. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, big win against Defiance. you got to push 3-1, yes. as you expected, yeah. to maintain an unbeaten season. Now, I know there's a lot of sentimentality involved mm -hmm. in that game because of the sure. family angle to it, mm -hmm. but break it down for us. What does that yeah. game mean? Well, I think it's you know, it's really always about the girls and those girls, you know, I've coached some of them. Brees coached some of mine. Um, they play together, you know, in the off season, et cetera. And so, you know, there's a camaraderie there certainly as well. And then our camaraderie coach to coach is certainly a little different um, as well. But um, it really just becomes about the girls and uh, helping them through that that emotional roller coaster. Sometimes you want it so bad, you know, that you can take yourself out. So just finding that um, balance throughout the match um, is always a challenge with that type of a of a match. But for sure, you know, them coming in, I just I knew like they're really good and they're. Uh, record with those few losses that they have were to, you know, really, you know, good programs. And, 
you know, all of us, the rest of us here in Northwest Ohio, we don't, we're not playing that schedule, although we're not that same school size, but still, we, we don't have that same schedule that they're playing. And, um, and they need to play those in order to uh, be competitive when it comes time for their league match. Uh, the WBL is always tough, and um, it's not just a, a one-horse race in the WBL for volleyball. Um, certainly there's ones that find themselves in there uh, <laughs> year after year, but um, it is, and it's, it's one that I know with what Bree brings to the game. Uh, she just sees stuff, and, uh, and she'll just pick you apart. And I knew that. I saw what she was saying, you know, to the kids. She was right. She made changes. She did everything that she needed to do. And then it's, you know, at some point in time, it's, it's just now about you got to play the game and you have to execute. So, you know, Bree's taught me a lot. And uh, I've learned a lot from her, and she just certainly has this uh, volleyball supremacy, if you will, and excellence uh, in what her expectations are, but also, you know, with that deep sense of knowledge that she brings. And her being here in the area, uh, she's mentored a lot of the area coaches and certainly tons and tons of of kids through the club program. So, you know, we're all benefiting um, from her, and um, and that's exciting for for the rest of us that we get to learn. Tonight is senior night. You've got seven, a huge class. And as we were talking about it before I hit the record button here, they've all represented not just the volleyball program, the school, Mm -hmm. really the community with great distinction. Now, I know it's apples to oranges because you love them all no matter where they go, especially Mm -hmm. when they come back and they say, Coach, you made a difference. But I'm going to ask you at least as generically as possible, what does this group mean? You know, um, with all of them, you get caught up in um, what's next, and you have this plan from the time the last that ball dropped last season, and formulating what we need to do to be that level team that I think we can be, and um, it, it's it's not anything that happens overnight, but it's certainly one that I knew with these seniors that. Um, they're all in. And most importantly, there's a trust there. Um, you have to earn that. And, uh, you know, they, the, the trust has to be present. And, and then that's what makes those relationships special. Th- that's not to say they're always going to agree. <laughs> that's okay. I don't agree with my husband and I love him. <laughs> um, and we don't always agree. And it's okay. And that's part of life. But um, it is a mission. It is um, a well-defined uh, purpose. And most importantly, you know, you spoke of the uh, undefeated part of it. We don't really talk about that. Um, it's not been part of our language and part of our practices. Uh, quite literally on Saturday, we were in and we were calling out our huddle in the locker room and we call out like where we're at. And somebody goes, oh my gosh, like we're, we're 20 and oh, what? I know we were all like, oh my gosh, we all looked at each other like, well, how did that happen? When did that happen? Um, because I feel like that's just simply a product goal um, and not anything that you focus in on and you can make happen. Um, it's so hard to obtain it, that for it to be your focus would be a difficult year. And to me, we focus in on what are the things that we have to do every day in practice to get better. Well, you lead me to my next question right here. Another Mm -hmm. day to practice is Mm -hmm. another day to improve. Granted, just a couple of games left in the regular season, but still a lot left as far as Mm. postseason is Mm. concerned. How much better can this team still get? Oh my goodness! Oh, you're asking, you're asking a coach. That's a that's a dangerous question. Or maybe I don't know. You want to sit down and we'll talk. We have a limited but time. On I this know, line. right, right, right. And that's not to say that you know I'm, I'm, you know, of all of the successes and what we're doing. But as soon as we get that one thing done, we turn and go to the next thing. And I remember one of my um, uh, players that I had, Brooke, back in the day at Defiance. And uh, as soon as they got that part of the mechanic done and whatever, we were on to the next thing. And she turned around and looked at me and she goes, coach, aren't you ever happy? And uh, it made me realize, yeah, I guess, you know, maybe we need to celebrate that other part more better, but then I'm right on to that next thing. So for me, like today, it was really about, you know, our, my middle blockers are not pushing their hip through, uh, which then translates with their hands. It's all connected. And so there's things like that that, but for me, uh, bringing a bigger um, variety, we certainly spread the ball and we have different hitters to go to. But I think within that, our transition game has to get better. So I always say, you know, you have to be humble in your preparation. 
And so it is a focus of ours when we come in. You have to be ready to learn. It's like a classroom. And you have to be open to that. If you think you already have it and you have it all figured out, then you're not going to make that progress You know that, that you're looking for, the team's looking for. I think you've done a pretty good job oh, so far. Give <laughs> well, yourself at least some credit uh, to enjoy I, it to the moment, right. correct? Yeah, we, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I'm like that um, nervous Nelly I, because somebody, somebody's right behind your heels. And just like Paulding. Paulding can come in and um, they can smack us around. They have the ability to do that. And they have some real nice young players that are just going to develop into some really, really nice uh, volleyball players that'll that'll find themselves in the top in the area, I think, here in the next couple of years. Um, but I do know we, we typically get everybody's best game. So I'm sure that they will be a different team and rightfully so. Appreciate you allowing me a chance to watch a little bit of practice, give me some access, yeah. not just to the volleyball players, mm-hmm. but the people. You have some special young women suiting up for the Rams. Yeah. Good luck to you tonight and the rest of the yeah. way. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm so happy that I didn't get emotional because I'm afraid if I go there, like they're just so special to me. Like I'm afraid I'm going to get like emotional tonight. <laughs> Coach Hagerty joining us. We're going to mm-hmm. take a quick time out. We're back with our player profile, one of those seven seniors, Avery Morris. When we come back, you're watching the Estelle Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show on DCTV Sports. Estel Chevrolet Cadillac is this area's new and used car headquarters, earning your trust one satisfied customer at a time. Estel Chevrolet Cadillac, North Clinton Street in Defiance, and online at drivebobestel.com. Welcome back. The Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues. It is senior night at Tenora as the Rams looking to remain unbeaten on the season. Coming off a big win on Saturday against Defiance, they're going back into the GMC tonight as they're going to be taking on Paulding. And one of the many talented seniors, and I asked Coach, who are you going to go with? And she said, without question, Avery Morris. She's picked up the microphone. She's our player profile right now. You ready to do this? Yep. Okay. Now, before we look ahead, I actually want to rewind a little bit. You okay with that? Yeah. All right. So it's your senior year now. One of seven, as I look up and see all those styling pictures <laughs> at the end of the gym. We kind of nicknamed this place the Emerald. It's decked out in green. It doesn't have its own nickname yet. Ayersville has the hangar. Defiance has the dog pound. We figured the Emerald kind of fits with Tenora. Yeah. When you were a young freshman, and you're a three-year starter, so you started as of your sophomore year, does it seem like a long time ago, or does it seem like snap of the fingers? I feel like... Thinking back on it, I'm like, that was so long ago. But in the moment, I feel like it was like, oh, my gosh, I have a long time to go and whatever until I'm a senior. And now I'm just like, it kind of flew by. Like, I look back on it, and I feel like I was kind of a freshman a long time ago, but I feel like I just started my high school career of volleyball. Now, there's the danger sometimes. Your senior year, everything becomes sentimental. You know, this will be the last time I do this, last time I spend time with my teammates doing that. Have, have you allowed yourself to think of that? Or are you able to stay focused and the next most important thing is whoever's the next opponent? I feel like I definitely have a lot of sentimental moments. Like my first game, I was like, this is my last first game. And it's always like nerve wracking, but I feel like this year it was different. I was more focused on, like, this is the last time I'll feel this, like, first game nervousness. And I've kind of appreciated it more, like, appreciate being with my team, and especially having seven seniors. It's like we're all so close, and it's my – I think I've had the most fun this year out of all my years of volleyball. This group seems like there are a few characters in it. Yes. But you also seem pretty tight. Is it fair to say you can goof around, but when it's time to get serious, you guys lock in? Yeah, for sure. Walk me through this, and in particular, every good athlete has a pregame ritual, whether it's specific music they listen to, a pregame meal, how they handle their stretches or their warm-ups. Do you have one? What's yours? Um, I usually get into the locker room, and I always get ready, put my stuff on, and then I have to make sure I put on chapstick before my games. And <laughs> I always, like, dance in the locker room before, kind of, like, get hype. And I think it's fun. I just, like... I think putting on chapstick is, like, puts me in the mode. Like, I can't explain it. I cannot have chapped lips during a game. It's, like, a thing for me. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. If it works for you, it works for you, right? Yeah. You are strictly a volleyball rat from what you were telling me. You don't play any other sports. When did you realize volleyball was the sport for you? Probably in fourth grade because I play for Defiance Volleyball Club, and 
at that time, they only had a team of fifth and sixth graders. That was like the youngest age group, but they took me in and I made the team and I was so happy. And from that moment, I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, it was so fun. And I played like every game. Like, it was like the best moment of my life. Like, I just remember when I was little in fourth grade and like I was with my first team. I was like, this is amazing. Like, I don't want to stop. And like, I've just enjoyed it ever since. Now you are multi-talented. Just because volleyball is your main sport doesn't mean you aren't involved in other things. What other clubs' activities are you involved in? Um, I'm also in our club, and I participate in the National Honor Society. And tell me the GPA. You can be proud of it. Yeah, I have a 4.0 as of right now. So one of several valedictorians is what you were telling me, So correct? far, yeah. They're all sharing the wealth at Tenor. They're super <laughs> yeah. smart in this class. Now, break down art club for me, because art can mean a lot of different things. What are you interested in? What's your specialty? Um... In general, I like to use acrylic paint, and in art club, I think it's a nice way for me to get more connected with art, because last year we went to Pittsburgh, and we got to go to art museums, and we also went to a play. It was in German, so it was really confusing, but it was still fun, and we got to go glass blowing, and then we're going again this year, so I'm really excited for that. Now, she's probably going to pshaw this, but she did admit to me before we started the recording you have competed with some of your artwork, correct? Yeah. Have you won anything? Yeah. Um, last year, um, I got a little bit of money because I won first in the Grable County Fair in my art category. It was, I'm not sure what the medium is, but it's like a black paper and you scratch it away and it was like a pelican and it's like one of the favorite things I've done so far and I loved it so much. End of the year is going to come. You're going to be styling in the cap and gown, diploma in hand. What's the future after graduation? I plan on going to Owens Community College and going into dental hygiene and right now I'm taking CCP classes that will help me reach my goals and I'm already taking some of the courses I'll need to take in college when I make it there. So if I come back in 10, 15 years and we do another interview, what's Avery Morris going to be doing? I'll be a dental hygienist probably somewhere around here in like suburban kind of area and Hopefully just living my best life on a little farm, my little <laughs> farm animals. <laughs> and paintings, of course. Right? Yes. Well, we're not going to graduate you too soon. you still got your senior year to go. Matter of fact, there's plenty of season left for volleyball. Mm -hmm. What's this team's goal? I think we really all want to win GMCs, of course, and make it to state. And so far we're 20 and now, two more games of the season. And then tournament starts, and I'm really excited for that. And I think we'll go far. I think we all have a good connection, and I think it'll go really well. Congratulations on a great season so far. Thank you. It's not over with, and enjoy senior night. Best of luck to you the rest of the Thank way. Thank you so much. Avery Morris, big smile, and <laughs> deservedly so. She's our player profile. We're going to take a quick time out. We're back with more of the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show right after this. You're watching DCTV Sports. Estel Chevrolet Cadillac is this area's new and used car headquarters, earning your trust one satisfied customer at a time. Estel Chevrolet Cadillac, North Clinton Street in Defiance, and online at drivebobestel.com. Well, our pregame interviews with the coach and the player profile now in the books. We welcome you back to the Estill Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. Estill Chevrolet Cadillac located on North Clinton Street in downtown Defiance. Earning your trust one satisfied customer at a time. Visit them in person or you can check out their selection online at drivebobestill.com. Unbeaten Tenora at 20-0 and on the season. 5-0 and in the GMC. They are playing a host. I don't want to call them the upstarts because they have played very tight matches and sometimes you can say a team's better than their record at 9 and 11 and 2 and 3 coming off a win last night versus Continental. It's the Paulding squad that would love to make a statement on Tenora's senior night. <coughs> Time now for your keys to game. Brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Your key to great career opportunities begins with a great education at Northwest State. Visit northweststate.edu or call 419-267-1320 today. Scoop, go ahead. Well, for Paulding tonight, I think a big key is going to be their passing. When they can get the ball to the strike zone of their hitters, this is an awful lethal offense that has the ability to attack early and often. I think another key for the visitors from Paulding 
will be aggressive serving. This is something the Panthers has done extremely well this year. They put a lot of strain on that opposing defense back row as they kind of go for broke on serves, and it's paid off. The third thing for Paulding, they need to minimize unforced errors. That's kind of been the telltale of their season. They do a good job of, of playing clean, limiting those unforced mistakes. They've been in every contest this season. On the flip side, what does or what do I guess it would be singular. What does Tenor need to do to remain unbeaten on the season? Well, for the Rams, if they want to keep that perfect record in line here tonight, it's going to start with controlling the back row. Tenor needs to establish the back row and connect with their setters, allowing the Rams to get in system and be able to utilize the entire court, making the attack blocks of Paulding a little bit more difficult. I think the second key tonight for the Rams is going to be blocking. The Rams will need to take away the pins. Uh, from a calling team that has proven they can hit aggressively from the sides. And I think the third key tonight for the Rams, they need to come out aggressive. Look for the Rams to try to throw the first punch tonight and attempt to set the tone with aggressive play against a calling team that's won two of the last three matches. If the Rams can execute these areas, they can clinch at least a tie for their 10th ever GMC championship in their sixth in 10 seasons under head coach Bretta Haggard. Those are your keys to the game brought to you by Northwest State Community College. Your key to great career opportunities begins with a great education at Northwest State. Visit northweststate.edu or give them a call at 419-267-1320. Today we'll have the Baker Schindler Company starting lineups in just a second. Right now both teams out and off their benches lined up at their respective ends of the gymnasium. It's time for our national anthem brought to you by the Defiance County Veterans Office. The Defiance County Veterans Office proud to support local veterans and their families, connecting them with resources for those in need. courtesy of our underwriter, the Defiance County Veterans Office. Time now for the starting lineups brought to you by Baker Schindler Company. Proudly serving the area with the highest quality contracting services for nearly 100 years. Baker Schindler Company of Defiance and Paulding. Baker-Schindler.com. Well, unless there have been changes from the last information we have received, the following six will take the court for the two teams here this evening. Let's start with the visiting Paulding Panthers. At outside hitter, it will be a six-foot sophomore, Kaylee Dunham. Dunham leads the team in kills with 176 and blocks with 83. At the other outside hitter will be Marley Parrott. Parrott, a 5'7 senior, 123 kills. She is an excellent server, 48 aces on the season. At the opposite, it will be Addison Aaron, a 5'7 freshman with 68 kills. In the middle, Lucy Breyer, a 5'10 junior, 137 kills. Their quarterback, the center, the distributor, is Grace Goings, a 5'3 senior. She's serving at 94%. She also has 25 aces, 161 assists on the season. And then they go back and forth. They will share duties in the back row, but we anticipate the senior libero, Brianna, as I look down here, Bermajo, the 5'4 senior with 228 digs, will get the starting, row, nodding, starting nod in the back row. <laughs> On the flip side for the 20 and 0, Kenora Rams. No surprises. And on a night when it's senior night, well, helps that you've got 
a healthy group of seniors, seven to be exact, that will get the starting nod here this evening. At middle hitter, it will be Kenzie Noggle, the 5'11 senior. At outside hitter, our player profile, Avery Morris, a 5'8 senior. At, other, at the outside hitter, they call her the volleyball ninja, Alina Ankeny, a 5'7 senior. Your libero, Paige Sebring, 5'4 and a senior. At the opposite, it will be Paige Gamby, the only junior, the only non-senior starter, the 5'6 junior, and your setter, Zoe Rostai, a 5'5 senior. And finally, the Sebring sitting next to us doing a different broadcast. Paige tosses up a volleyball to him. It took a second try, but good to see if they got it. Yeah, a great crowd here tonight on senior night here in Ram Country. And what should be a good yep. one, uh, as you mentioned, Tenora trying to claim at least a share of the GMC title. They can't win it outright until they uh, go to Edmonton next week. But first things first, they're going to have their hands full against the Paulding team. that's yep. uh, hungry for a victory. The last nine games of this series have all belonged to the Rams. But Paulding would like to put it into that streak here tonight. We welcome you to the Emerald. I talked to Coach, I talked to Jake Essig, the athletic director here, and I said, this place doesn't have a nickname. Defiance has the dog pound. Ayersville has the hangar. You walk in and the first thing you notice is all the green. The Nora green, Emerald green. You and I have tried to start this. We're gonna try and continue it. We're dubbing this place the Emerald and hopefully it catches on. Well, remember, we're in the Emerald City. This is called Jewel, <laughs> so why not? Let's go with it, and again, Absolutely. Uh, this is the place to be if you live in Ram Country because you've seen it. Their baseball programs, their football programs, their wrestling, their basketball, you know, on the boys, girls side, you know, these people love to support their young athletes. We have an outstanding crowd here tonight for senior night. We're about to get things started here. Uh, we've had a couple of hours of hype. Now it's time for a couple of hours of truth. Paulding will serve to open up the ball game. Grace Goings puts a fist into it. Gamby, that's a top first touch, and Tenor will have to send a free ball over. We'll see if the Panthers can take advantage of it. What a tremendous up by Rostai. Nago, it's down! And what an inauspicious way to begin senior night. Tell you what, that's a gut punt early for Paulding. They had a tremendous serve deep, a lot of velo behind it. Then they had that tremendous hit at the net, only to have that dinosaur dig. And Tenor turns around, scores the first point. Morris puts a fist into it after the side out. Nice up by Sebring. She is a junkyard dog. She is playing and not in anywhere near 100%. Talked with mom and dad earlier tonight. She is banged up. It's the nature of the position, Scoop. As a libero, it's just an unwritten rule. You sacrifice your body for the game. Well, you do. Those people are on defense. They have court coverage. It doesn't matter if you're going into the bleachers, the bench, the wall. You're trying to extend points. They'll set Gamby near side. The block is there. Almost a freebie and miscommunication on the Paulding side. You have three players in black and maroon all kind of staring at each other and the ball falls in between them. Well, that's too bad because Kaylee Dunham, the sophomore, had tremendous block there on that Tenora attack. But yet Tenora is able to garner the point. The Rams lead early here 2-1. Nice up by Bermejo. The block on the right side is there as Tatum Kreps has checked into the ball game for to Nora, they list her at six foot. Scoop, she looks a lot taller than that. Well, she does have a long arm span Very as well. Very long. But again, we talked about blocking being one of the keys for Rams. So they get all the blocks early with a couple good ones. Well, Dunham had her spikes sent back. And this one goes into the net off of Marley Parrott's fist. Unforced air. And again, if you are Paulding, you can't give really any of those away tonight. You can't, and this is exactly the start that Tenor needs. We talked about the importance, staying focused, locked in on senior night. Oh, and, and how about a little help from the tape? That never helps. Uh, a little help from the net there, the Rams will take it. That'll go down as an ace there for Paige Sebring, the senior of the barrel. That's a premier bank 
Ace at it. So great start here. Rams up 5 1 early. Sebring again with a low line drive of a serve as they got what they wanted, but that one sent just a little wide off of Dunham's fist. She didn't quite have the angle to cut that shot. Yeah, and right now the Rams doing such a great job with aggressive serving. Paulding has not just been able to get in system yet. They've had to uh, take some shots, really not in her strike zone. Well, there's another nice serve there by the Rams. Oh, the 30 ball. yep. Wow, great execution once again, but how about Tatum Kreps there? She, she sees the party ball, takes advantage, stuffs it home. 7-1 Rams. Six straight off of Sebring's serve. Looking for number seven. Nice dump sent over by Goings. Gamby didn't quite get what she wanted on that. They'll set the freshman near side, but Kreps is there with the block. They'll set far side. This one will float a bit. Sebring keeps it in play. Gamby again. Oh, what a cut. What a tremendous up by Bermejo. We play on. Nice back set. Boy, they set up Callie Snyder well there. This time Kreps. Joust at the net, stays on to Nora's side. Just inside the 10 foot mark on the dink. Gamby couldn't quite get it, and this is going to be a free ball. We'll see if they can do something in system. Gamby, third time's a charm. Oh, what a great point by the Rams. Both teams did a nice job of, of really moving their feet, extending the point. But how about uh, Gamby there finishing off with the kill off the block? Now seven unanswered by the Rams. Sebring with that crow hop. Nice job of zone serving as they will set near side to the freshman Aaron, but that ball was just off a bit. Gamby wins the joust there. We're going to have a net violation. Nope, check that. One too many contacts. Make it seven, now eight straight off of Sebring's serve. Well, last week at Ayersville, she was everywhere, black and blue. I called her a junkyard dog. And Coach Hagerty said that's a perfect example of his libero. Gamby goes cross court. Nice up by Bermejo. They'll set the freshman just a bit wide. I'll tell you what, Addison Aaron, for being a freshman, going up against a huge right side block for Tenora is showing no fear. Oh, yeah, she's done a nice job. She's gotten better each and every game this season. Uh, really started out on the JV. Midway started getting a lot of varsity reps. Now it's worked away in the starting lineup. Oh, that was just a misplayed ball, and that was as easy as it's going to get for Paige Gamby. We talk about high Bible IQ. We saw it right here. Gamby with the push to the corner, and Paulding wants to talk it over. We're going to take a Mark Motes Ford timeout, serving the Defiance community since 1916. Mark Motes Ford on County Road 424 in Defiance and online at markmotesford.com. Tenora up 11-1, first set. We're back after this on DCTV Sports. For the past 70 years, Midwest Community Federal Credit Union has been your financial partner, helping you achieve your dreams and secure your future. Midwest Community Federal Credit Union, with locations in Defiance, Bryan, and Napoleon. Find out more at MidwestCommunity.org. Back at the Emerald, Brent Albanot alongside Scoop Miller. Unbeaten Tenora, 20-0 overall, 5-0 in the GMC, taking on a 9-11 Paulding squad. Coming off a win last night at Continental, they're 2-3 in conference play. But after getting a side out on the very first, actually second, ball of the night, it has been all paid Sebring. She has rolled off 10 straight points. Looking for 11, almost got a service ace there. Panthers will send over a free ball. And look at this, who's bumping it up? Kreps. That's one too many contacts. Yep. And she also went under the net. So after 10 straight points off of Paige Sebring's serve, Paulding finally gets a side out. Well, that's incredible. What a way to set the tone here on senior night, having one of your seniors step up. 10 consecutive. That's awfully big. She served 10 straight in the fifth and deciding set in that five-set victory at Archbold a couple weekends ago. She's a tremendous server. Paige Gamby picking up where she left off. 
Makes it 12-2. Right now, Tenora clicking on all cylinders. Uh, you know, I've seen this Paulding team uh, several times this season. They are completely out of sync, but there's a reason they're out of sync. The fact that Tenora is putting so much pressure on them with the serve. They're getting in system. Their block attacks have been uh, excellent here tonight. Ella Shoblin in to serve. She goes down the far side, and that's basically, in effect, an ace, even though it ricocheted off of three Paulding players. Well placed. Yeah, another service winner here for the Rams. And again, they continue to put a lot of pressure on that Paulding back row. Now enjoying their largest lead of the night here at 13-2. Another good low serve. Running those set far pin. The freshman, Aaron, let it rip. Gamby a little off the net, still with a great placement. And in system. Shoblin will serve Kreps. It's the top of the tape. This will back them up. Not much they can do. Nice job by Morris out of the back row. Gamby with the termination. They'll beat her right now because she is absolutely playing with so much confidence. That time she goes down the li line there. Boy, they're bringing the heat tonight. And again, when the Rams are in system, boy, this is a tough team to defend, as we're seeing right here. It's two straight off of Shoblin's serve. This one deep. They decide to play it. Who wants this? They'll set Gamby near pin on the dink. Good up by Permejo in the back row. Morris lays out. Shoblin will set Gamby again. Boy, they have been working the left side nonstop. And again, Paulding forced to send over a free ball. Shoblin with the back set. She'll go opposite side. Kept alive. And that one just took a bad angle off of Sebring. Now that time Paulding catches the break because uh, Burma Joe just had to kind of push one over but was in the right spot after a couple deflections. Paulding gets a much needed point. Shoblin got cross footed. Kreps will send over a free ball. Quick set. Kreps is there with the block and very quick move on the opposite side by Perrin. Still doesn't seem to matter. Just when you think you've won a point, somebody in a green and white uniform is keeping the ball alive. Just incredible. Paulding was able to finally get the ball to Kaylee Dunham, who leads the Panthers with 176 kills coming in. And she had in her strike zone, but the Rams had that nice uh, attack block. And there's another service ace as Tenor continues to rack up those premier bank aces here early and give that one to Paige Gamby, the junior. 16-3, that's off the platform of Tori Schlotter. Schlotter, I think, got caught in no man's land there, Scoop. I think if she had it to do over again, she would have sidestepped that ball and let it go. I think it might have been sailing long. Yeah, you're exactly right. And uh, again, uh, Tenora, when you make so few mistakes, you're not anticipating that. And I think that's part of the reason she went after it. They're going to set near side. Dunham tried to dink it over. Again, that ball might have been going long. But electing to play it, Barmejo keeps it alive. Off the combination play, moving in, the lefty. Avery Morris just kind of taps it over. And Nora sends over a free ball. Off the quick set, finally in system, and Kaylee Dunham with the termination for the band. Great job by Dunham. Again, she's a lethal weapon when you get in her strikes over that time. Well executed quick set by Paulding. And uh, to Tenora now uh, on the defense here is Paulding trying to put together a run, but that serve is going to sell low. Addie Scholl just a little too amped up. The 5-2 libero sends it long, and there's a service error. And again, that's, that's in effect a free point if you're Tenora. It, it really is. We talked about that in the keys. You just have to minimize those unforced mistakes. You have no margin of error when you're no. playing a team that's 20-0 like the Rams. They'll set Nagel, puts it down. Nice up by Addison Peace. Bumped up. This is going to be a tough angle for Mora. She couldn't put, quite put what she wanted to on it. They'll set far pin, and that will go out of bounds off the block. A great job by Bermanjo that time going off the block. That time the Rams uh, try to go with the uh, double attack block. A great execution by Paulding. They miss Bermanjo at five. Four, and yet she's playing outside hitter in that rotation. Service error makes it 
And credit to Nora, you know, that time they get another gift, but they have not allowed Paulding to get any type of rhythm. They, Paulding has not scored back to back no. points here in this opening set. It's been all ramps here early. By my count, Scoop, Paulding was in system once so far in this first set out of 24 different points. We got an, an antenna violation, and the tower official is, they're going to let him play on. He completely missed it. The line judge had the flag up, and now the floor official is making sure that the call is correct here. They, they got it right. They played through it a little bit longer than they needed to, but uh, correct these guys getting together, they get it right. Now a 15-point advantage here for the Rams. Back to serve, Rostai. Put down by Noggle. That wasn't even a joust. That was just, again, a free ball. Yeah, that's a party ball. First contact goes over the net, and credit Noggle. She was uh, anticipating that in the right spot. She stuffs it home. The lead continues to swell here for Tenora. Rostai takes a little something off of it. In system, just long. Those are ones you have to connect on. Lucy Breyer had a good angle and just Basically hit it inside out. And Lucy Breyer is second on Paulding as far as kills, but we've really not bench here tonight because, as you mentioned, Brett, they've just not been in system here no. with this aggressive Tenor approach. There's another Premier Bank service ace for Rostai. She took over at the 20-point mark. She's rolled off three straight, and is it possible she might serve out the first set? Yeah, she's been tremendous, serving at just over 94% clip on the season. That one's going to sell well long. And uh, Paulding will get a side out, but right now, Paulding has her backs to the wall here. And right now, you're not going to salvage the first no. set for the Panthers, but what you have to do is maybe try to get some momentum and find a way to get some confidence here going into set number two. 23-6, getting set to put a fist into it, Goings. Nice up by Sebring in system. Noggle sends it wide. Boy, a rare misfire by the Rams. Well, Pauling will take it again. They just need to find a way to settle in. They played very nervous here early. And there's Ooh. a premier bank ace once again. That one shanks off the platform of Paige Gamby. Again, That's still down 23-8, but there's your first back-to-back -back point combination for the Panthers Yeah, tonight. Tenor's at least, uh, they're swinging right now. So, uh, or, uh, sorry, Paulding's swinging right now. They're not just folding up the tents here, but they've got a mountain to climb here, down 15. Off, it wasn't quite a quick set. Noggle made something out of nothing there. As that one dinked over, feathery touch from Marley Parrott. Yeah, great job there, just finding the seam in that Tenor defense. So now three consecutive points here by the Panthers. That one sails long, and you can hear Sebring yell at Gamby out, and Gamby pulled back. And now we've got how many, what's the term for 13? Well, it's actually 15, so it's Quinn DeCouple set point <laughs> right here. <laughs> Math teachers, you can correct me if you want there to, you but it is Quinn DeCoupel set point here. Trying to serve this one out. Sophia Stark comes in, and she does just that. As the Rams make short work of the Panthers in set number one, 24-9. They are off and running in style on senior night. We will take a Mark Motes Ford timeout. Mark Motes Ford serving the Defiance community since 1916. Located on County Road 424 in Defiance or online at markmotesford.com. We'll take a quick time out. We'll back with more on DCTV Sports. Estel Chevrolet Cadillac is this area's new and used car headquarters, earning your trust one satisfied customer at a time. Estel Chevrolet Cadillac, North Clinton Street in Defiance and online at drivebobestel.com. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center. 
personalized service, and quality products in a friendly and caring atmosphere. Schedule your appointment today. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center, Stadium Drive in Defiance, and online at visionsource-brunswickeye.com. Back at the Emerald Tenora High School. We've got GMC Volleyball taking center stage on DCTV tonight. Brent Balvinon alongside Scoop Miller. The unbeaten and sixth ranked Tenora Rams just flexing their muscles on senior night as they take the first set against the visiting Paulding Panthers 24-9. Scoop, it's like diving in on the deep end. You could sit and say, let's jump in anywhere and you'll have positive stats if you're a Ram. Well, no doubt about it. Uh, Tenor was clicking in every phase of the game. Uh, their serving was so aggressive, so precise. Their court coverage was excellent. Their blocking schemes were spot on. And, of course, their attack game was really clicking early. Result in an impressive 25-9 win here in set well, one. Well, it started with Paige Sebring's serving. She rolled off 10 straight, and Paulding was on their heels from the Basically the get-go. Yeah, that's that's a mountain to climb there in volleyball. So, again, uh, credit Sebring. She really set the tone. She brought her A game tonight. And now if you're Paulding, you have to flush that first set, try to set the tone early. You've got to somehow find some confidence. Not an easy thing to do when you're playing a 20-0 Ram team with so many girls out here, you know, three-year starters for Coach Haggerty. Yeah, at this point, though, if you're Paulding, you can't think in terms of sets. I think you think of individual points, right? You have to win Absolutely. literally every individual point. It's just on to the next one. That's where your focus has to be because if uh, you get caught looking ahead, uh, good luck, especially against this Ram team that's really locked in. Remember, we talked about Tenor's won the last nine matches of this series, but during that time, Paulding's only won one set in the last nine matches, so really Tenor has had that number, and sometimes that plays into you when you're Paulding thinking, oh, oh here we go again. Tenor, we're going to get swept. We'll see if uh, Paulding can right the ship here after a tough first set. Ross Stein will put a fist into it to start off set number two. Good low line serve, and we had a whistle sound here was... Did she serve before she was given permission? I don't think permission? she was signaled to whistle. Yeah, that he's wagging his finger at her. <laughs> A little tisk tisk. Zoe Rostai will try and lock back in. Might as well have a little fun here. Oh, that was oh, funny. The court. Didn't seem to affect her at all. They'll set to the far pin. That sets off the mark, and Dally Snyder knows what to do with it. Great job by Callie Snyder. She saw the party ball, and she was able to uh, take advantage of the overpass and a quick first point by the Rams. Rostai going deep, going right at Addy Schull. That one kind of dumped over and in system. Wow, well struck by Snyder, and nobody's going to be able to track this one down. Nice job by the senior, Callie Snyder. And again, how about Tenor really playing clean in the back row? They've done a good job controlling that back row, finding their middles. And a 2 0 start here for the Rams. Rostein, 5 5 senior setter that. Boy, the bottom dropped out of it. They're going to do a quick set. Nice job, though, by Snyder to get there. They'll set the middle, and Noggle puts it away. Lupton University is going to get a very good middle hitter. No question about it. And how about Rostai once again? A perfect soft set. And then Kenzie Noggle brings the hammer down. Boy, she's bringing the heat tonight. 3-0 start here now for the Rams. Playing with so much confidence. Despite a gentle rebuke from the tower official, Zoe Rostai has stayed locked in. That ball partially blocked, and they've taken the setter out of things. This will be a free ball. Can Paulding do something with it? Finally in system, and they can't. They mistimed the set, and Noggle's there to put it away. Well, just a heads-up play by Noggle one more time. You talk about having a high volleyball IQ. This entire Ram team is showing it. And now a 4-0 start here for the Rams, trying to uh, – Get some doubt to creep in on that Paulding side of the net. Tough first touch. This will sail long and right into the Tenora bench. And much like Sebring to open up set number one, Rostai is on a roll here in set number two. Boy, she really is. Again, the aggressive serves 
putting so much strain on this Paulding defense. The Panthers have just not got in system here enough tonight. Boy, Bermejo from her knees. Good first stop. Late layout by Sebring and a free ball sent over by Morris. Quick set and it's just wide. This is what the good teams do to you. See right there, Lucy Breyer, everything was set. They ran everything the way they wanted to on a rare free ball. She throws her palms up. The good teams always speed you up just enough. You're exactly right. You know, that's a shot she typically is going to uh, find the court on. That time the cut angle sails wide. Out of the back row, Gamby with an unorthodox save. Oh, what a dump! Rostai, that is a cagey move. Tremendous dump that time that caught the entire Panther team on their heels. Boy, they were not expecting that. But again, uh, you pick your spots. That time, uh, Rostai dropped a dime there on that dump. And now a touchdown advantage here for the Rams. Give her a service ace, a Premier Bank service ace. A little miscommunication, maybe confusion in that back row between Bermejo and Shaw as they run into each other. And Coach Taylor wants a timeout. I can see why as off and rolling off the serve of senior Zoe Rostai, it is 8-0. We'll take a Mark Boats Ford timeout. We're back after this on DCTV Sports. The Strady Center for the Arts. Entertainment on a whole new level. The Strady Center for the Arts presents a full lineup of culture and entertainment right here in our community. Check out the full lineup and purchase your tickets today at defiancearts.org. Stamball Jewelers is your trusted source for diamonds, fine jewelry, watches, and gifts. Whether you're looking for a dazzling engagement ring, a timeless anniversary gift, or a present for someone special, Stamball Jewelers has something for every occasion. Visit us today and discover why we've been serving the community since 1948. Back at the Emerald, Tenora High School Gymnasium, the sixth ranked and unbeaten Tenora Rams hosting Paulding. Rams won the first set commandingly 24-9. They are up 8-0. Coming off a Paulding timeout, back set. Great up by Bermidjo out of the back row, and finally something in system. A Rostai set, so now it's going to be basically back and forth here as it was Sebring that had to become setter, and that ball's going to go just a little bit long. A uh, pretty good look by the Rams there out of the timeout, but... Uh, the spike just kind of misses that in line, so a break for the Panthers. They end an 8-0 run here to start set two. Nice jump serve. Oh, what an up by Sebring. Free ball, and wow, what a tremendous serve. Yeah, great. That's number 12, and I believe we don't have a 12. Oh, wait a minute. It's Libby Breyer. There we go. The Breyer sisters. You're exactly right, and Breyer serves another one, this time handled nicely by Morris. Noggle puts the hammer down, and you, you're just seeing Panther players now, I don't want to say helter-skelter scoop, but they're not in position. It's almost like who's going to even get a first touch on it, much less being where you need to be for the second touch. Well, you're right, and they've been on defense, you know, 90% of, of the rallies we've had, so they're just kind of out of sequence, out of system. And right now, kind of in scramble mode, but again, credit to Knorr for putting so much pressure on the Paulding Panthers here tonight. Sophia Stark, one of those seven seniors, in to serve as they'll set Gamby, the junior, and the block just wasn't quite there. Through the uprights, if you will. A great job by Gamby. That time, Paulding had a double attack block uh, on her, but she decided to go right through it, and she gets the kill off the block. I think that was supposed to be a combination play, but the set was too low. And Gamby off the block of Dunham. They keep it alive, but only for one more touch. Well, the Rams are so locked in, just not allowing Paulding to get any type of momentum, any type of run here whatsoever. That might sail long, and Stark's run off her serve will come to an end at three. 11-3, our score. A rare miss for Stark. She comes in just over 95% service accuracy on the season. That one just missed that back corner. 
Marley Parrott puts a fist into it. Long run for Rostai. Noggle lays the hammer down. It just doesn't seem to matter, does it? It doesn't matter. They've got so many weapons to pick from, and that time Noggle goes right down the pipe there, is able to get the kill. And now a 12-3 advantage for the Rams, trying to get some serious separation here in the second set. Tatum Kreps checks in, Sebring back to serve, and a service error that just kills her mom. <laughs> and now I was thinking we're gonna have another long run here. I had all these great bullet points that I could have talked about. We'll have to wait until she goes to serve again. Puts out her platform here, good first touch. They're gonna run the slide play. And nobody's going to track this one down. Uh, great execution. Uh, that time you saw Tatum Kreps there go behind there in the slide. And what an another nice soft set. Put it in her strike zone. Another kill. And Tenor continues to roll here as they now enjoy a nine-point lead once again here in set two. Up 13-4. Shoblin will do the honors here, serving from the far corner. Boy, the bottom fell out of that. And that's going to sail on. It's just so difficult to get into system scoop when you don't have a good first touch. And right now, I'm not saying that it's anything that Paulding's doing because Tenor is just a tremendous serving team. But at the same time, right now, I think Paulding's just happy that they're keeping the ball in play to get to a second touch. Well, you're right. The first contact for Paulding's been awfully tough, and this time they're able to get a good look. Oh. Once again, the defense by Tenor is spotless. Kreps ran into Gamby. That gets down. Well placed. And I believe that was Bermigio. Yeah, great job that time by Brianna Bermigio, the senior outside hitter, and that time, she dropped a dime right in that corner. She goes down the line, gets the lead down to nine again. Shell takes something off this serve. They'll set Gamby near pin. Oh, wow, well played. Paige Gamby deked out the block. I think they cheated just a bit. And then in midair scoop, she squared her shoulders around. Boy, she really did. She tricked her there, expecting that cut angle. Spike going the other way, and she tricked him, goes down the line. And now back serving. Does that hit the line? It does. Helter Skelter, but they find the far corner and a very quick side out to make the score 15 6. Well, credit Paulding. That's the only place that ball could have dropped where the Rams weren't there. But again, it, it hit the chalk there right back in the corner. And now to lead down to nine one more time. Here's a three ball opportunity coming for the Panthers. They get something in system, and I believe that's out off the block. No, they're going to say just long. I think that time they just tried to go over the block. Coach Taylor was up, and I thought she was going to argue, but at this point, no protest coming from the Paulding bench. I think they tried to lob to the back corner there, try to go over the block, just missed it. Quick set. They got something in system, but a nice up by Shoblin. Again in system again, a rarity twice in a row, and it's down. Boy, it just makes such a difference. Well, you give the kill Marley, to Parrott. Marley Parrott that time. You talk about a tough cut angle shot to that time she delivered. And that kill lands just inside that back corner, just inside the sideline. Huge point there for Paulding. They continue to battle, but right now they're just treading water. They need to yep. string together a run. Goings puts a fist into it. They'll set Morris near side. The block was there. Nice job by Breyer. This one dinked over. Whoops, I've got it. Nope, you've got it. Who wants it? Shoblin will set. Far pin. Nice job on the attempted placement there by Alina Ankeny, who's checked in. Morris, the block was there again. Morris tries to dink this over, and that's going to be a violation. How about the middle, though, there? And Breyer in particular, not one, not two, but three blocks. Great job there by Lucy Breyer. Welcome to the block party, she says, and she delivers. 16-8. Lead down to eight. It's close as uh, the Panthers have been in a while. Noggle with the dink, and again, confusion. Back row, front row. That's an unforced error, and it's basically a gift wrap point for the Rams as they get the side out. Well, that's what happens. You're in scramble mode the entire time. Communication becomes paramount, and that time the communication wasn't quite there. And a gift that time for the Rams as they get the lead back up to nine once again. 
Rastai, who started this set with eight straight offers served, back again. Good first touch. They'll set the freshman Aaron. And out of bounds. Point, side out to Paulding. They look much better here in set number two. Yeah, they're really trying to compete. They had a hard time, especially in that first set, adjusting to those uh, high velo serves. Uh, so aggressive by Tenor coming out of the gates here on senior night. Libby Breyer with a good jump serve. Sebring lays out. The junkyard dog giving up her body again. So set Aaron, this is gonna go, wow. It's out of bounds, it was off the block, and if Breyer wasn't running right in front of her bench, I don't think she hears her teammates saying back off. She was gonna play no, that ball. She was going for that ball all out, but credit to the freshman Addison Aaron. Tremendous uh, left-handed spike. Gets the kill Service for the block. But there you go, you just don't have this type of margin of nope. error against the Tenora team, who's on a mission right now. You know, they're locked in. Trying to get up two sets of love here in this uh, GMC match. That could put a tie for the Rams. Morris, the lefty, quick set. They're running some offense now, and Kaylee Dunham with another termination. Well, Kaylee Dunham, uh, that's a hard matchup because she likes to play above the net. She's got that great length, that great vertical jump, and that time she gets the kill off the block. Parrott puts a fist into it. Sebring lays out. This will be a free ball. Again, something in system off the quick set. Sebring from her knees. They'll bump it up. Terminated on the right side by Kaylee Snyder. A great execution. And Paulding typically will get that point. When they get in system, they get it to uh, Kaylee Dunham. At that time, the Rams are digging so well. Their back row play tonight has really been phenomenal. And right now, just six points away from closing out this second set. Sebring back to serve again, her turn in the rotation. Tenor up 19-11. Good low serve right into Bermuggio. Dinked up, but Morris is there in the back row. Rostai to Kreps. Give her the kill. Kreps has been awfully effective here tonight in the middle, and that time she's able to take advantage of a nice soft set. A nice cut angle there to that right corner. 20-11, becomes a five-point set. Nice floater, and give her a Premier Bank service ace. Just incredible job. Paulding has not uh, figured out to uh, Paige Sebring tonight as her serve just as dance around a tough looking floater. Just as you say that, Scoop, I watched the back row take about a half a step up here for Paulding. And it's still low. What a great job of zone serving. Ball kept alive. It's Helter Skelter. Who wants to get into system? That's self preservation by Morris as she rolls out of the way. Gamby. That was maybe trying to do just a bit too much. Boy, that was a high difficult shot there. She tried to go up with a little hook shot with the right hand, tried to catch uh, Paulding off guard, but Dunham on the spot there, gets credit for the block and kill. Sebring with a great first touch, and that's just too tough of an angle. Did that go out of bounds off the block? No, they're gonna say it will be Paulding point. Timeout to Nora. 21-13, we'll take a Mark Motes Ford timeout. Mark Motes Ford serving the community since 1916, located on County Road 424 in Defiance. Back after this on DCTV Sports. Simplify your everyday banking with convenient account options and digital banking features that fit your unique lifestyle. Premier Bank, everyday banking solutions designed for you. Explore solutions today at yourpremierbank.com. Discover top quality healthcare education at Northwest State. Our instructors have real world experience, so they know how to prepare you for great career opportunities. Northwest State, where you'll get the top quality healthcare education you need to succeed. Back at the Emerald right there, you see a less than enthused Coach Hagerty. Her team won set one 24-9. They're up 21-13 right now, and yet, it's clear she doesn't think they're playing their best volleyball right now. Well, you look at after the 8-0 start, it's been 13-13 here the rest of the second set, so she feels they're maybe just playing right now in the competition. 
and really want to up their intensity and uh, their focus. They credit Paulding. They've upped their game here. There's a serve. Oh, service. Aaron with a beautiful serve. The bottom just fell out of it. Premier Bank service ace one more time as the freshman southpaw. Boy, that ball just fell off the table. Yep. Again, a very short serve. Morris has to go to her knees. They'll set Kreps, who puts it away. That's one way to end a Paulding run. Go right to Kreps there in the middle. She continues to deliver. Just dominant. Boy, she loves that cut angle there to that right corner. Boy, she's just playing so much above the Panther defense right now. Another kill. And now the Rams just three points away from closing out set two. Ella Shoblin will try and do the honors. It's a little crow hop. Deep into the back row. They'll back set. Nice job by Shoblin. Look at this. Sebring turns setter. Gamby. Oh, and a tremendous job by Dunham. A great read by Dunham. She just went up and just stuffed that ball away. Again, uh, kind of the party ball there. And she's able to uh, put it home. The Panthers still trailing by seven deep in set two. Kreps tries to go to the far side, and this time it doesn't matter. She'll take on anybody and everybody. Yeah, another overpass, and that time Kreps uh, comes out swinging. She's been so aggressive here tonight. Now the Rams are creeping closer to set two. Another good deep serve off her heel, Schlatter. Put away. Tell you what, Paulding isn't going quietly here in set number two. Well, they're battling. It's the team that's well coached. I mean, they're going to continue the battle. I mean, they've been out man here a little bit, but uh, they're certainly uh, start to uh, find a few holes in this Tenor defense. Bermaggio right up Gamby's platform. Kreps tries to put it away. Dinked over and feathery touch. Marley Parrott, uh, the senior, one more time, and at that time just caught the Rams napping there with the nice little dump. And now the lead down to six. Vermudja goes cross court, a little too amped up. And now what is it, Sept? Wouldn't be Septuple, it's Sept seven. Septuple, there you go, Septuple, set, set point. point. This would give the Rams a two sets to love advantage. Boy, what Krebs wanted to end it with a ace. This one dinked over. Nice job, though, by Shoblin to run it down. Morris can't put anything on this. Can Paulding do something in system? Oh, what a tremendous up by Shoblin. Another free ball. This is the third time a charm for the Panthers. Oh, what a tremendous up by Morris. We play on. Power down, Danby with one arm. Set down again, and finally, best rally of the night. Great point by the Panthers, but how about Paulding there? Morris with the pancake, and then Gamby with the tremendous save there. But again, uh, credit Paulding, they stayed with it, and yep. now they've trimmed the deficit <laughs> to just six points. So sex tuple <laughs> set point coming up here for Paulding. 24-18 as goings will serve. It's going to be a long run. This will be a joust at the net. That's a violation. Boy, Paulding is making this interesting. Well, they've battled. You know, they've really done a great job since that, digging that hole. And now Quinn Tuple set point. All right, good first touch. In system. Boy, the block's there. They'll set Morris near side, cross court, and it sails just wide. A great decision by Paulding and Addison shoulder libero to let that spike sail wide. And now it's down a quadruple set point. It's Timeout to Nora. And a less than happy Coach Hagerty was going to talk to her charges. Now, Tenora's still in control here, up one set to love, and with four set points, they had seven. And right now, this is to just Boy, she's being a little animated here, and I think what she's, if I can read body language, Scoop, and you tell me what you think here, but I, I agree with you. I think she thought maybe her team has just kind of downshifted a little bit, and all of a sudden, Paulding has risen their level of play, and how often do you see a team, when they take a breath, it turns into a hiccup, and they can't get back into overdrive? Well, no question about it. They've taken their foot off the accelerator, and credit Paulding. They've outscored the Rams here. 
uh, 20 to 16 since that 8 old deficit. But you, you still want to be where Tenor's at right now. Yes. You still got quadruple set point, but again, you're trying to you're trying to coach here. You know, you cannot take plays off. If we want to make a deep tournament run this year, we want to run the table GMC. We've got to continue to focus and just focus on that next point. Another set opportunity come up here for the Rams. Goings with a tough serve, but Gamby well played. Quick set, Nago, that's out of bounds, off the block. And that is a little bit more work than they thought they might have had to put in. But credit Paulding for coming back after giving up eight straight to start the second set. 25-20 to Nora now with a commanding two sets to nothing lead. We'll take a Mark Motes Ford timeout, serving Defiance since 1916, located on County Road 424 in Defiance and online at markmotesford.com. Back at the Emerald right after this on DCTV Sports. Proudly serving the area with the highest quality contracting services for nearly 100 years. Baker Schindler Company of Defiance and Paulding, 419-782-5080. Online at baker-schindler.com. Visit Mark Motes Ford and check out some of the best new Ford models. Mark Motes Ford has been serving the Defiance community since 1916. Visit them today, County Road 424 in Defiance and online at markmotesford.com. I see Coach Hagerty laying into her team despite being up two sets to nothing. They had to earn set number two, 25 20 over a game holding Panther squad. But they now lead two sets to nothing. They're going for the sweep. Looking to remain unbeaten. It would be their 21st of the season as we welcome you back to the Emerald Denora High School Gymnasium. Brent Balbinon alongside Scoot Miller. All right, Scoot. So here's the question, and you just saw right there a little fire being preached by Coach Hagerty. The question now becomes, did Paulding empty their tank in an effort to win set number two, or do you anticipate them to continue their, their risen style of play? Well, I expect Paulding to continue to play at a high level, but I also expect Tenor to come out with a lot more energy and focus than we saw deep in that second set. So. The credit to uh, head coach Emily Taylor, the Paulding Panthers. A lot of teams, yes. when you lose the first game big, you fall behind big the second game, it's easy to kind of throw in the towel there a little bit and go to the next set. But the Panthers did all they could, could they work back in that. It's going just a little bit too much down the stretch. And now the Rams have an opportunity to finish out a perfect home slate here in 2024. Right now, the Rams 10-0. They'd like to make 11-0 here at home. But Paulding's proved they're going to try to put up a fight yep. here and find a way to extend this match. Buzzer sounds. We get set for the start of set number three. Panthers will open it up, and it will be goings. So we put a fist into it. Good first serve, but Gamby is perfectly placed. Morris and the block was there. Sent right back at her by Kaylee Dunham. A great job by Dunham once again. Uh, the new kid on the block up to the task. And the Panthers take an early lead here in set three. Goings. Bounces the ball a couple times. Boy, her serve dies a quick death. Make it two straight for the Panthers to open up set number three. All right, you've seen it a couple times. My guess is Paulding, pardon me, my guess is Tenora's back row is going to step up about a good Boy, a good step or two. I would think they're going to come in a couple steps. That ball's falling off the table. Yeah, Morris did just that. Spot. And Nagel oh. knows what to do with it. Wow. 
Wow, great job by Kenzie Noggle that time as she just hit that ball straight down. <laughs> and that ball ricocheted straight up. So good way to answer a 2-0 Paulding run to start out set three. Morris, Southpaw puts a fist into it. Noggle's there on the block along with Snyder. They'll sit Gamby near side. She dinks it over with her left. Block is there, but it's out of bounds off of Noggle. But well, Nago had to cover a ton of ground there. Yeah, she did. She was trying to go hard to her left, and the freshman, Asset Aaron, continues to play her aggressive game. And that time, the lefty is able to get the kill <laughs> off the block. I love the look of Addison Aaron. She looks like a freshman. She's got the thick glasses on, the hair back, and the ponytail. She's got that baby face, but she is showing no fear. And as I say that, they set to the opposite pin, and that's going to be an unforced error. And right now, this is where Paulie needs a side out because Paige Sebring is really delivered. Yep. Serving the volleyball here tonight, she's been a part of a couple big runs by the Rams. Whoa, little pinball. Quick set, Kreps was there. Rostein sets the far pin. This will be out of bounds off the block. Gavin Snyder with determination. Credit Kreps that time because Paulie had it where they wanted. They had it in system. They had it to their go-to person, but Krebs says, welcome to the block party. <laughs> well, that's a big time block. We have our first tie here of set three. Three all. Three apiece. First point off the Sebring serve. See if she can get another run here. That's a tough first touch. Sebring lays out. What a tremendous up. She'll send over a free ball. Dinked over to Nora. See if they can do anything with this. Gamby's going to send that one long. Well, Paulding's really battling. You know, right now they've really done a nice job of, of kind of weathering an early storm and very competitive. Now they have perhaps their best server back in Marley Parrott. This time she throws a changeup. Took a lot off of it. They're going to set far pin and into the tape. Snyder didn't look like she quite had her timing on that one. That's something I've seen Parlett do. She'll, she'll take a lot off there as Parrotta kind of threw that change that forced Krebs to receive the serve. Now she puts a bullet into it and an unforced service error. Again, that's something that I think Pauling's lived with through the season, Brent. They, they understand that uh, risk-reward type deal, so they've been very aggressive, you know, trying to be uh, super aggressive, trying to put pressure in this ramp back row that's been so good tonight and that time that catches the tape the Rams have trimmed the lead to one looking to tie it up here for the second time here in set three. Shoblin goes down the far side this is going to be a long run for Schull they do get over a free ball in system quick set Krebs with the termination yeah you just don't have an answer for that when they can get in system and find uh, Krebs here right in the middle of the floor and this time she throws a little wrinkle, goes yep. to the left side, but what a tremendous kill. The Rams have knotted things up here at five. Shoblin takes a little something off of this. That's going to be a tough ball. It's going to be a free ball. Shoblin setting near pin, dinked over by Gamby. In system, wow. And showing a little emotion. I still can't believe that she's as tall as they say, Tori Schlatter. Puts that one away. No, that time, great job by the softball Schlatter that time. Boy, she delivered there. Puts the hammer down. But another service there, this time by the freshman Aaron. We have our third tie here in set three. Back and forth we go. 25-9, 25-20. First two sets, two to Nora. Right now, Paulding is coming out, firing on all cylinders, and we go back and forth. Uh, great execution again by Paulding as Lucy Breyer was able to uh, bring the heater. And that time she gets the kill. The Panthers uh, maintain the lead here at 7-6. Wow, ace, a premier bank ace. That ball just kind of knuckled right by Morris. She pulled back. She could have easily played that scoop but the bottom fell out of it. It fell right off a table. It really did. Uh, they were there, but they thought that was going to sail long. So credit Paulding again. Aggressive deep serving paying off. Sebring with a good first touch. There you go in system. And Morris 
usually very spunky, all smiles, a little animated. She danced a lot when I came to practice yesterday. When I mean danced, I mean pirouetted like a ballerina. Right now, she is locked in. I don't think she wants a fourth set. Preps tries to thread the needle to the far side, cannot do so. Well, if you watch Coach Haggerty at the end of the second set, I'll guarantee you they all are saying the same thing. We do not want this to go four. We need to take care of business now, but uh, Paulding has really battled here in this third set. I get to a one point advantage. Morris goes cross court, but Scholl's there. This will be a freebie. Oh, we got an antenna violation. Both the line judges were quick to call it. And this time the point does not play out any longer than necessary. And once again, Tenor continues to battle as well. This is our fourth tie, this time at eight apiece. And Zoe Rostai. We'll see if she can't duplicate what she did to open up set number two, and that was go on an eight-point run off her serve. Shaw with a good up. They'll set far pin and trying the tough angle. And I mean cut angle. Marley Parrott, it was all or nothing, and she couldn't do it. Boy, that was a tough cut angle. You can't get any uh, finer than that. And the Rams have their first lead here, the third set, at 9-8. Sends it deep. Communication, a little breakdown in the back row. Tenor with a freebie. Rostai sets Noggle. That floated on her just a bit, and nothing Noggle could do with it. Yeah, that time it just kind of drifted away. Nowhere near her strike zone. And uh, by the time she's able to make contact, there's no chance. And that ball catches the net, and once again, we're tied up, this time at nine apiece. Goings puts a fist into it. Little unorthodox by Gamby. They'll set Morris. It gets down. Now, well, great execution right there. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Right now, you're approaching the midway point of the third set. You're going to have to really start to emerge in here, try to get some separation. And now we have our sixth tie here at 10 apiece. Stark with a good serve. In system, that'll sail on. Good job by the Rams. You know, they've trying to not relinquish uh, that lead. <clears throat> We're able to uh, get the big point there. Now trying to. Get some separation against this pesky Paulding squad. Sends this one deep. Noggles there on the block. Rostai will set. Far pin. Dinked over by Snyder. Freebie coming the Rams' way. They'll set up Gamby. Beautiful termination. Love the effort by Shaw as she laid out. But she never had a chance. Ah, great job there by Gamby once again. That ball came right down on that end line. Finds a little chalk there. Now Tenor maybe finding their groove here, up by two, midway through this third set. Stark goes deep, that's a floater. And nothing Paulding can do with this one. Sebring will set for the near pin. Can be unloaded. Here comes another freebie. Rostai, combination play, dinked over by Gamby. Sometimes it's not how hard you hit them, but where you put them. Yeah, she's so good at that. And again, she picks the right spots, and that time is able to just kind of dink it over, and Paulding unable to uh, make contact. Three straight off a of Stark serve. This is going to be a long run. Stark gets to it. They do send it over on a freebie. Combination play off the quick set. Sent down by Dunham. Yeah, credit both teams. A hustle play there by the Rams to extend the point, but then Paulding took advantage of the free ball, something they did not have a lot of success with, although they've not had a lot here through the first three sets. Huge point there for Paulding, trying to get themselves back in. Rostai to Nago. I think you need to feed your middles more. I mean, we talked about it in the pregame with Coach Hagerty between Nago and certainly with uh, Tatum Kreps. I just don't think that they have an answer on the Paulding side of that net. And yet, they've been working pin to pin successfully, but at this point, I think if you want to make a run, I think you've got to set your middles. Well, I I've seen it so far, you know, and there's a big point to be had. We've only had a few, but uh, Coach Haggerty's left to go to the middle. And credit Paulding again. They're putting some pressure here on this Tenor defense. Be right, Brent. 
There's not a lot of teams in the GMC that really have that offensive attack geared toward the middle. Tenor being certainly the, the one that has the strongest by far. Nice up by Stork. We'll see if they can do anything with it. Gamby, I don't want to say as an anonymous voice in the chorus here, Scoop, but she would be, not that she's not a standout here, but you just think about the depth on that front row that Tenora has. We were just sitting there talking about Noggle, Kreps, obviously on the opposite side, we've called Snyder quite a bit, but Paige Gamby is as reliable as they come. Oh, no question about it. She's impressed me tonight. This is the first time I've seen the Rams this season. <clears throat> wow, she has been the one that uh, they stuck out for me. So consistent, can hurt you in so many ways. So be a free ball sent over. Can Paulding do anything with it? They'll back set to the freshman. Gamby's there with the block. Sebring lays out. Bodies flying everywhere. That's Shaw. Can they save it inside? Yes! We play on. Shoblin sets up. Trips with the termination. Wow, fitting into a tremendous rally by both these teams. But uh, how about Sebring there with that save? It looked like tremendous. Paulding was going to win the point. She somehow saved it, but not to be outdone. Paulding with the tremendous save yep. on their side of net. 16-12, we'll see if that puts some wind in the Rams' sails as the freshman sends it long. You know, you just kind of feel that was the point that may have catapulted the Rams here, and I think Paulding recognized it as they burn the timeout. We're going to take a Mark Motes Ford timeout as well, serving the community since 1916. Check them out on County Road 424 in Defiance. We're back after this on DCTV. For the past 70 years, Midwest Community Federal Credit Union has been your financial partner, helping you achieve your dreams and secure your future. Midwest Community Federal Credit Union, with locations in Defiance, Bryan, and Napoleon. Find out more at MidwestCommunity.org. Estill Chevrolet Cadillac is this area's new and used car headquarters, earning your trust one satisfied customer at a time. Estill Chevrolet Cadillac, North Clinton Street in Defiance, and online at drivebobestill.com. Back at the Emerald, Brent Balbanon alongside Scoop Miller. I think, and I'm assuming, we got a Sebring and it's the older sister. And yes, we're talking about you on the air, it's positive. She brought a sign earlier, said she may be short, but she covers the court. So I'm assuming that Paige Sebring has a sibling or at least a friend in the stands here, but she has covered a ton of court here this evening. That is a, an accurate sign. Boy, no question about it. Uh, her and her teammates have been so impressed here tonight. Uh, you can see why this is the team that's 20-0 and just uh, seven points away from being 21-0. Yep. Trying to close out Paulding here in straight sets tonight. Gamby with her team up by five. Substitution Morris will check in for Stark. Gamby, that's a tough serve. Tenora gets a freebie. Shoblin back sets. That's going to be, well, it stays playable. I thought that was going out of bounds off the block. Morris. Can't quite terminate. Will they set? They'll set the middle. Kreps out of bounds off the block. Well, they continue to have really no answer for this uh, attack right down the middle. And how about Kreps once again? You get it anywhere near her strike zone. Boy, she's delivering. Boy, can be. It doesn't look like much, but it is a laser. Speaking of lasers, holy cow, Corey Schlatter unloads. Yeah, the sophomore, Tori Slaughter, she's second in kills on the team coming in. You see a little bit of reason why right there. You talk about bringing the heat. Slaughter did that time, ends up getting the kill. Oh, catches the tape. Still play on. Dunham couldn't terminate. Dinking this one over and again, showing a nice feathery touch. The volleyball ninja, Alina Ankeny. Ah, great job by Ankeny that time as she just kind of uh, changed up there a little bit. Threw off the timing there of Paulding. And now the Rams just five points away from closing out this match. Preps going to the far side again. They'll run the slide play. It's out of bounds off the block. Well, credit to Panthers. They continue to battle. They've really fought an uphill battle most of the night, but they continue to swing. And right now, the Panthers just one run yeah. away from 
really being in the thick of things in this third set. Wow, Shoblin from her knees. Morris goes right at Schull. It's kept alive. Morris, a little unorthodox. Into the net. We'll play on. Sebring lays out. Can anybody get into system? That's going to go wide. Well, how about that save off the net by Molly Parrott that time? It looked like the Rams are going to secure the point, and Parrott had to really drop down there low, anticipated well. And now that lead trimmed to four here. Slatter. Boy, that ball barely cleared the tape. Set into the far pin. Shaw keeps it alive. In system, dinked over. Nice job by Shoblin, but it took the setter out of the play. And Morris sends it just a bit long. It looked like he would have been out of bounds off the block anyway. Now that time uh, they get the point off the block. So great job by the Rams there, staying with it. They've had to overcome a little adversity here in this third set, really not clicking like we saw early on. Rastai only needs four more off of her serve. Well, we've seen it. Uh, she's more than capable of doing that. This one just as we say that service error. That's a killer. That was going to be a tough ball to return, and uh, Paul Dean awfully fortunate that that did not have a little bit more English on it because that kind of hung on the top of the net. But the Panthers with the serve trying to trim into that four-point deficit. Going serves deep. Noggle. They're now three points away from the sweep. Well, there's that middle attack that Paulding just seems not to have an answer for as Doggle puts the hammer down. And the Rams creep closer here. Up five here, just three points away, closing out the match. Morris, kind of a yes, should I? Maybe no. Schlotter plays it, and this goes long. being two points away, all of a sudden it's like a, a silence just fell over the emerald here. The freshman, Aaron, it's out of bounds, off the block. Paulding is not going to go quietly. They, they battle, you know, I've seen that. This is the most improved team I've seen from a year ago is, is the Paulding Panthers. As we mentioned, they've lost four tough five set matches this year. Well, they would have an even more impressive record. Nago with the termination. It is now match point. And is it going to be Sebring to do the honors? How about this? And uh, remember, she had that 10 0 run here earlier in this match. And the crowd is up for it. She'll put a fist into it. They'll get something in system. Sebring from her knees keeps it alive. Back at the 10 foot, Mark Gamby. They're going to set Gamby again. There it is! 21 in a row. 25 18, the final score in set number three. 25 9, 25 20, 25 18, as Tenora celebrates senior night with a straight set win over a very game Paulding squad. Yeah, an impressive win here by Tenor. They set the tone early, but credit this Paulding team. They fought like champions to the end. That last set, we had six ties. We even had a lead change, but Tenor just a little bit too much here tonight. And the Rams now up their winning streak against the Paulding Panthers to 10 consecutive matches. That dates back to the 2011 season, the last time the Panthers had success here against the Rams. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we will break it down. It will be the Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show. You're watching DC TV Sports. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center. Personalized service and quality products in a friendly and caring atmosphere. Schedule your appointment today. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center. Stadium Drive in Defiance and online at visionsource-brunswickeye.com. The Strady Center for the Arts. Entertainment on a whole new level.
The Stritty Center for the Arts presents a full lineup of culture and entertainment right here in our community. Check out the full lineup and purchase your tickets today at defiancearts.org. Stamball Jewelers is your trusted source for diamonds, fine jewelry, watches, and gifts. Whether you're looking for a dazzling engagement ring, a timeless anniversary gift, or a present for someone special, Stamball Jewelers has something for every occasion. Visit us today and discover why we've been serving the community since 1948. Simplify your everyday banking with convenient account options and digital banking features that fit your unique lifestyle. Premier Bank, everyday banking solutions designed for you. Explore solutions today at yourpremierbank.com. Discover great job skills training at Northwest State. With over 50 different programs available, there is something for everyone. Providing hands-on training and education is the community college advantage. Proudly serving the area with the highest quality contracting services for nearly 100 years. Baker Schindler Company of Defiance and Paulding. 419-782-5080. Online at baker-schindler.com. Back at the Emerald, and that is a good frame job. They are running a video tribute to all seven seniors for this year's class. Right there you see Callie Snyder. They have run some baby pictures, some junior pictures, and then some varsity pictures or current pictures. And right there you take a good look at Paige Sebring. Oh, Paige, she is an Basically a junkyard dog. We didn't get a chance for a run on her set, or pardon me, her serve, other than that first set. But I've been told we've got to mention this. Paige Sebring's favorite snack are pickles and Reese's peanut butter cups. Explain that one to me. Whatever works, I guess, right? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm one that empties out the uh, pickle jar, dumps, dumps the juice right away. But apparently <laughs> she likes to drink it. She does. She drinks it straight from the jar, apparently when she's done with her Reese's peanut butter cups, but whatever works. So it worked tonight, 25-9, 25-20, 25-18, as Tenora sweeps a game, and really I'd say a future team in the Paulding Panthers. But right now, Tenora is a team of the present as they up their overall record to 21-0, 6-0 in the GMC. The Panthers fall to 9-12, and 2-4. and four. Just one game left for both these two teams in the regular season. And they both play on Thursday. Uh, Paulding will host Antwerp on the road. Tenora will finish up at Edgerton. As we anticipate being joined by Coach Bretta Hagerty and possibly a player or two, she said she wouldn't grab more than a couple. She didn't want to grab everybody. But we'll wait and see. I got a feeling... Paige Sebring might be one of the players she brings up, but we'll be uh, grateful for whoever coach elects to bring up for our Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center post-game show. Keep your eyes healthy for a long life of clear vision. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center, your family's vision source, stadium drive in defiance and online at visionsource-brunswickeye.com. A scoop, seven seniors that have represented not just the program, but the school and the community with great distinction, and they get to celebrate senior night in style with a three-set win. Yeah, what a way to go out for these uh, seven seniors. A perfect 11-0 record here at home at the Emerald. And what great community support to see these seven seniors go out in style. Tremendous to see uh, the, the bleachers packed here tonight in what was a clinching game here as far as a piece of the GMC title. If you know anything about this Tenora team, that's not the goal. They're not satisfied as getting a piece. They want to run the table. They'll have to wait till they travel to Edgerton for that uh, season finale. But right now, the 10th title 
uh, for volleyball in school history here by the Rams. Six of them under head coach Bretta Haggerty in her 10 seasons. Uh, the only other four times that Coach Haggerty didn't win a title, three of those times they finished runner up at six and one. One time they were five and two, good enough for third place. But boy, this one has to feel well, awfully good against a very talented GMC this season. You're talking about the conference, and understandably so. You can't win two until you win one. But let's be honest here. It doesn't stop the season I'm talking about Thursday after Edgerton. This is a team that I guarantee you, if they are honest, I don't know that I'll ask Coach this because I know what she'll say. Edgerton's the only match that matters. But when Thursday rolls around and they hop on the bus to come back here, this is a squad that can make a deep run in the postseason. Well, there's no question about it. You know, uh, the rank number six here in Division Six, and if you talk to Coach Haggerty, I'm sure any player in that team, what's the mo most important match of the season? It's always going to be the next one. So right now, that becomes Edgerton. After that Edgerton match, it becomes a sectional. But again, it's that one game at a time, one match at a time approach that's been very successful for the Rams this season as they really came ready to play here tonight, I thought, Brent. Well, speaking of ready to play, they came ready to serve. Uh, the stats bear that out, especially for the first two sets. Uh, Sebring rolled off 10 straight in the first set before it was it was over basically before uh, Paulding had a chance to catch their breath after one side out not to be outdone after a 25 9 win in set number one eight straight off the serve of Rosti uh, now granted they maybe hiccup just a little bit and credit Paulding for raising their level of play in that second set but 25 20 was the final score of set number two and then all of a sudden uh, I don't want to say you've dug yourself a hole that's too deep to get out of because Paulding still played competitive in that third set. But uh, Tenora back and forth with Paulding in that third set. But again, late serving. And in particular, four off the service of Stark. And that ends up being uh, basically the better part of your difference on that mini run to a 25-18 third set win and a three set sweep. Well, you're right. And, and the thing that's really impressive tonight, Brent, as far as this Tenora win is they had so many different people contribute. You know, you mentioned a few of them right there, but again, I thought everyone that stepped on the floor there tonight was off the good. I thought their energy on the bench was, was really good. And those are the things that you need to have if you do want to make a deep tournament run, especially when you have that bullseye on your back at a perfect 21-0 as the Rams do right now. 21-0 overall, 6-0 in the GMC. Again, Paulding Falls to 9-12 and two and four. Up next, one last regular season game for both teams. It will be home for Paulding as they will welcome Antwerp. It will be on the road at Edgerton for Tenora also on Thursday, and then we're going to be talking postseason. We're going to continue to talk the Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show. Keep your eyes healthy for a long life of clear vision. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center, your family's vision source, stadium drive in defiance, and online at visionsource-brunswickeye. Com. We are going to take a quick timeout. I know the seniors are doing a lot of what seniors do on senior night uh, in the foyer. We are hoping to be joined by uh, Coach Hagerty and possibly a senior or two. We're going to take a two-minute timeout, a two-minute break. We are back with more of the Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show right after this on DCTV Sports. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center. Personalized service and quality products in a friendly and caring atmosphere. Schedule your appointment today. Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center. Stadium Drive in Defiance and online at visionsource-brunswickeye.com. For the past 70 years, Midwest Community Federal Credit Union has been your financial partner, helping you achieve your dreams and secure your future. Midwest Community Federal Credit Union, with locations in Defiance, Bryan, and Napoleon. Find out more at MidwestCommunity.org.
the Strady Center for the Arts, entertainment on a whole new level. The Strady Center for the Arts presents a full lineup of culture and entertainment right here in our community. Check out the full lineup and purchase your tickets today at defiancearts.org. Stamball Jewelers is your trusted source for diamonds, fine jewelry, watches, and gifts. Whether you're looking for a dazzling engagement ring, a timeless anniversary gift, or a present for someone special, Stamball Jewelers has something for every occasion. Visit us today and discover why we've been serving the community since 1948. Simplify your everyday banking with convenient account options and digital banking features that fit your unique lifestyle. Premier Bank, everyday banking solutions designed for you. Explore solutions today at yourpremierbank.com. Discover great job skills training at Northwest State. With over 50 different programs available, there is something for everyone. Providing hands-on training and education is the community college advantage. Oh, wow. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sebring helping us out here. He's got to be proud. This is what you do at this level. You, you help everybody out. I was going to say, I think uh, Brownie needed a, a power strip for me like last year, and I'm like, please, help yourself take two or three. So our appreciation to him helping. Uh, he's been doing a, a masterful job, ladies and gentlemen, of keeping statistics here. Let's run them down here. For kills, Paige Gamby in double figures is what we thought with 10. Uh, Kenzie Nagel with 11. Tatum Kreps with 10. So you've got three players in double figures there, Scoop. And again, we talked about it. There's so much balance on that front row. You might be able to take away one, possibly two, if you maybe cheat with the block a little bit. But I don't know how you effectively cover the net from pin to pin with this front row from Tenora. It is deep. Well, you're right. They can hit you from all sides, every angle. And we mentioned what a great team effort and a team win this was here tonight. I think those stats right there back it up. Speaking of aces, serving, Paige Gamby with a couple, Paige Sebring with a couple, Zoe Rostai with a couple. Just a, a tremendous job. They kept uh, Paulding on their heels all night long. First touch was very rarely clean for the Panthers. Yeah, that set to tone early. You, you could count on a hand that first set how many times that Paulding was on system. You didn't need to use uh, your thumb. I mean, it was uh, that impressive. But, again, it goes back to that aggressive serving and again, you could tell that Tenora came out focused. They weren't coming out and uh, just enjoying senior night and forgetting to play. Boy, they really came to play tonight as they just dominated that first set. And I didn't think I'd see that type of separation because, as I mentioned, I've seen this Paulding team over and over again this season. And they're well coached. They're well disciplined. they got some good young athletes. But boy, they took a couple blows there in that first set. They just could not quite overcome it here tonight. Well, and even when they were in system, again, especially the back row was more than up the task for Tenora. Paige Gamby with 10 digs. Avery Morris with 10. Zoe Rostai with seven and then the junkyard dog Paige Sebring had 14 herself she's probably going to be a little black and blue but my guess is right now none of those seniors are feeling a thing as they just celebrated senior night tonight to go 21 and 0 and 6 and 0 in the GMC which leads us to our last piece of business we uh, have got to decide now normally we take a player of the game which is brought to you by BSN Sports uh, but at this point in time, I don't know how you differentiate between all seven of those seniors who have been just tremendous this season, Scoop. We're going to give it to the entire senior class tonight. Well, I think that's the right call. I mean, what a tremendous job these seniors have done. You don't get to be 21-0, a perfect 11-0 at home by not putting in tons of time and effort. And not only do they have the physical tools to excel, they also have a strong mental approach as well. So many of these kids on the Honor Society with perfect four rows, they work together so well. But this isn't something that just happened overnight. You, know, you no. don't get to this juncture by just, hey, I'm going to play volleyball this year. These kids have been playing together. 
for 10 years, a lot of these girls, and it really showed tonight. And our congratulations to these young ladies as uh, not only are the seniors tonight's player of the game, but they wind up uh, a perfect 11-0 here at the Jewel. Emerald. Or Emerald. Got to get it City. down. Jewel, Jewel City. I going to say, if you're going to give the facility the nickname, we got to be on the same page. That is going to do it for our broadcast here this evening. A big thank you going out to all of our crew. Uh, doing more than yeoman's work here this evening. Uh, next broadcast, we'll be back out here at Tenora. It will be Friday night. It'll be on the gridiron. Again, the river rivalry. They refer to each other as that team across the river, as it will be Tenora hosting the Ayersville Pilots. Again, in three sets here tonight, senior night is celebrated by a senior class of seven as Tenora wins 25-9, 25-20, and 25-18. For Scoop Miller, I'm Brent Balbinot, thanking you, the fan, for tuning in. You've been watching a presentation of DCTV Sports.